Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be downgrading this modern BMW with this. Allow me to explain. So this is a blow-off valve and we're going to be adding it to this 2018 440i. So this is a Gen 1 B58 and it comes from the factory with no blow-off valve, no diverter valve or bypass valve. It uses logic from the digital motor electronics to control how it handles excess boost pressure when you let off the gas. Adding a blow-off valve back into this may seem like we're going back in time, but of course I'm doing it for the theater and for the sound, but there's more to it than that. I'm going to go into a technical analysis starting from the N54 to the N55, N20 and to the B58 and let you know what has changed and why this doesn't have one. But we'll cut to that after I unbox this and then we'll start the installation after that. So this particular kit is from BMS. So those are the charge pipes. That's your blow off valve. This is the hardware that comes with the blow off valve. It's a turbo smart blow off valve. It comes as a complete kit. Right now you can only get this charge pipe with the included turbo smart blow off valve. And here's all the installation hardware, which I'll cover one by one while we're doing the install. Before we start installing this, I'm gonna go over a quick history lesson with regards to how boost is handled on the older models and how it's handled today to kind of make the title make some more sense and also the downgrade, so to speak. So let's cut over to that and then I'll come back when I'm ready to install. So I'm gonna give you guys a technical explanation as to how the technology has evolved with time, starting with the N54 when BMW got back into turbocharged motors. To start with, this is an electronic throttle body. That's been the norm for the last 20 years or so. So it's computer controlled, but at the end of the day, you have a traditional throttle body. So under normal circumstances, this thing is varying the amount of air that can come in, causing a bit of resistance, but at the end of the day, it's how it controls airflow. The throttle body bolts to the intake manifold. If you're flooring it and then you release the gas really quickly, it has to close to be able to control engine RPMs. And in doing so, that can cause back pressure. It can cause the pressurized air to feed back to the turbocharger and damage it. So you need to be able to mitigate that. Now, in terms of vacuum, let's just picture a vacuum to start with. So if you look right here, there's a vacuum nipple on this intake manifold. So when this thing closes abruptly, you're gonna get a pressure differential between the pressure on this side of the throttle body and the pressure in the intake manifold. Whatever air was in there will get consumed by the engine and then it's gonna be like you covering one end of a straw and trying to suck on it. You're gonna get a vacuum situation where there's no air to bring in. So imagine if you're just sucking on this end and then covering this end, you're gonna create a vacuum situation where there's no air in here. So then you have a pressure differential. So you wanna have a reference from this point, which is the nipple. This would be your charge pipe, which clips onto the throttle body, which is of course bolted to the intake manifold. From the intake manifold nipple that I just showed you to here, you're gonna have a vacuum line. Then you're gonna have a diverter valve, which is gonna be in your charge pipe, which is going to take the pressurized air and it's gonna pass it back through into your intake air box, anything that's unused. If you're to look inside there, there's a diaphragm and it's spring loaded. So there's pressure coming in here and there's pressure coming in from the top via the vacuum line coming from the intake manifold. As long as the pressure here equals the pressure here, you're not gonna get any movement in the valve. But as soon as the pressure is different, it doesn't have to be like straight vacuum, it just has to be different than what's on top. So you let off the throttle, the intake manifold goes into a situation where there's less boost, then there's gonna be less pressure acting on this diaphragm and it's gonna allow for this to push in and then that's gonna allow for this valve to push air back out through here. So as long as you have the same pressure coming into this nipple here as you do into the base here, nothing will happen with this valve. As soon as there's less pressure on the top, that's gonna give way for the pressure that's in the bottom to act up on this diaphragm and force the air out this channel. Back into your intake or you can vent it to atmosphere. It doesn't really make a big difference. Now you may be wondering, why is there a spring in here if at the end of the day you're using uh, the pressure of the turbo to keep this pushed down? The spring you would think is helping act on pushing it down, but really it's overcoming the vacuum that would want to lift up on the valve that's inside here. So you're just overcoming that. So you don't get a situation where it's just acting up on this. The spring helps keep it down. So under partial throttle or very light boost, it doesn't just bleed it all away. Now, if you look right here, this is a map sensor. It's on the manifold, but really there's a primary map sensor on the charge pipe that normally bolts here. That's on my car at the moment. But you have this one here, which also references the temperature, but this is kind of uh, an easy way to think about it. Some cars just have this. So the way the car would adjust for fuel coming into the engine is via this map sensor to measure the pressure in the intake manifold. And depending on how much pressure is in here, it will give more fuel. There's no mass airflow sensor on the N54, for instance. All right, this will kind of be a little strange analogy, but uh, assuming this is the air intake, not the charge pipe, it's on the other end, you have a filter and it's sucking air in. Imagine you heated up this screwdriver and then you made it red hot 
and then you put it into this port here as air is blowing by it and it's going to naturally get cooled off by the air. If you were to measure how fast it cools off via voltage, that would be your mass airflow. How fast do you overcome the heat on here? And that's how it's going to adjust airflow. So on a newer generation car, you may have a mass airflow to optimize for situations where you're not under heavy boost, as well as a manifold absolute pressure sensor that measures the pressure in the system. So you can kind of see how much air is coming in in very fine detail for better emissions. Now you may be asking yourself, if you have a traditional throttle body that has a valve that will close that will create a vacuum situation in your intake manifold. So why did the N54, for instance, come with a vacuum pump that would actually spin around, pull in air, bring it over here like a rotary and compress it? Why is this on the engine? Why does this get driven by the timing chain? Here's the cover for it that bolts together. And then from here, you have a vacuum source. Now from this vacuum source, you get a couple tubes off of it, which then go into these storage containers to store vacuum, to then act on this solenoid. So you have an inlet and an outlet to be able to pulse this, pulse width, modulate this so that you can control how much vacuum is being supplied to the turbocharger. Now the reason you have a vacuum pump on the N54 primarily is not so much to be able to help your vacuum assist in your brake system, because you could probably do that just on the vacuum from not being in boost. The main thing is to be able to to have fine resolution or control over your vacuum solenoids to control your waste kit in your turbo. And that's why, you know, if they put all this effort to add a vacuum pump just to give you a continuous form of vacuum to feed your turbocharger so the DME has better control, then you shouldn't delete these. We've talked about that many times. So really, that's just a way to give precise control over this waste gate, which gets driven by vacuum. If I were to push on the waste gate arm and hold here, it actually keeps it in place as you can see. So really, you're just trying to control via vacuum the wastegate of the car, and you're not gonna have vacuum in the intake manifold when you're under boost, so therefore you wouldn't be able to control these, so they had to put a vacuum pump on there. So all that does is cause you to control this wastegate door so that when you close it, the, the path of exhaust gas is forced to go through this port here to cause the turbocharger to spool, and when you open it, you're getting rid of the boost and you're killing the spooling. So really, it was for vacuum control. And if you're familiar with BMW, vacuum pumps you may be saying well hey uh, actually i understand why we this is required now but how come the first time we ever saw it was on na motor on bmws why do they have it on like the n62 for instance or the n52 etc why is there a vacuum pump to create vacuum when it's just a traditional motor i can explain that now you have to look at this picture here that is a traditional exhaust cam and it has a roller rocker which acts on the valve and it's just basically, you know, as we've always had. Here's the physical representation, just your standard exhaust cam and there's your roller rocker as it rolls and falls the profile. If you're coming up here and you put your finger here and it's rolling over, it gets bumped on and it actuates your valve. Simple enough. That seems standard, that's traditional. When you look at the other side, you have a camshaft but it's not sitting on the same plane. It's up and over. You have these springs that are bolted to the cylinder head, which are on an actuator arm, which is kind of like a boot. So if you look at that shape here, imagine that being in your toes and that being your heel. So depending on how this gear is moved via this Valvetronic motor, which is in the middle of your cylinder head, that will control whether or not these valves were open or closed. So when it's all the way over here, it's gonna be like not acting on these valves at all. The camshaft is spinning and busy doing things, but it's not actually pushing down on the valve. But then if you were to rotate this gear over and then have the, your tippy toe on that roller rocker, your roller rocker is being actuated upon because that tip of the toe is touching here, but when it rotates out of the way, it's not doing anything on it. That's how you vary how much lift or how much the intake valve can open or close. So can consider this like your throttle body and consider this like your foot being, uh, you know, in the reverse where, you know, as you act upon this, it changes how you press on this and it's kind of like a throttle. So this was introduced on the N62, N52 and uh, N55. This is from an N55. This motor used to be bolted to the valve cover from the outside. It was just a similar system, but it was up here instead of in the middle of the cylinder head. But this is kind of relevant for what newer cars are like. So hopefully that makes sense to you. So on an N55 and newer, it has a throttle body just like this. Not as robust because it's not used. And the moment you turn your key on, it just goes to this state. 
to a full open situation. It's just always open the moment the key is turned on and the engine is spinning over. It relies on the valve tronic to control the airflow. You may be asking yourself, well, what's the major benefit for that? Why can't they just use a regular throttle body? If your valve tronic were to ever fail, then this would actually start to actuate. But really, is it efficient to have air trying to get around those two restrictive holes when you're just partial throttling? Definitely not. Or imagine you are off the throttle. You're in a situation where you're no longer on the throttle. You want to get back onto it and you want to get as much response as possible. When there's a vacuum, when this is closed, the moment you start to open it, air has to rush in and fill this whole cavity with air molecules to be burnt. When you have Valvetronic, it's always open, so the air is already waiting at the bottom of this port to be used by the valves, so you get better response, better emissions. Now, if you had to ask me, why didn't the N54 come with Valvetronic? Because the N52 was out at the same time. It's because they didn't have the technology in terms of boost control, not quite figured out yet. So on an N55, for instance, or B58, if the throttle is always open and you let off the gas, is there really a whole bunch of excess pressure that has to be dealt with? Yes and no, but not as severely. So going to Valtronic is unique to BMW, but one thing it does is if you slam the throttle shut under heavy boost, that air doesn't have to be handled the same way as normal. It doesn't have to get bumped back into the intake. There's other ways to handle it. I think this was the key for BMW to be able to allow for Valvetronic to be incorporated along with turbocharger technology when the N55 came out. So really all this is is an electronic form of this. So you have an electronic connector that talks to the DME and it will decide when it should be venting the boost pressure depending on throttle position in different situations. This is an N20 turbocharger, but this, is, this part looks just like an N55 turbocharger. So if you look inside here, there's a little port that can take the pressurized air from in here and then bypass it through here back into the intake. That bolt's there. If you want to add a blow-off valve to your N55, you change this piece and you're talking to it electronically. It's not rudimentary because it has the ECU control. So that frees you up to be able to tell this, hey, the moment you come off your throttle, uh, even though the, the valves are kind of doing their thing in terms of controlling airflow, you can still talk to this and say, why don't you vent that back into the intake? Why is it so important to have a, a blow-off valve or a bypass valve or a diverter valve? Uh, what can happen? So you can get shock waves that will uh, cause that, that choo -choo 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 sound like that, that choo -choo 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 turbocharger sound if you don't have a proper blow-off valve and that can actually snap, the forces can snap this rod in half. That happened to this. I don't know if it's due to oiling or, or what, but this shaft will break and no longer act on this shaft here for the intake. So it's important to, to not have those heavy pulses coming and damaging this. This was the key to allow for you to have valve tronic on a turbocharged engine. And now they don't even have this anymore. On the B58, it's gone. And you may be saying, well, that's strange. So you're adding a blow-off valve back to your car. Why would you? So this is an N20 turbocharger, but it's similar to the N55. On the first model year, they actually ran a traditional vacuum actuated wastegate. And then I believe in preparation for the newer generation engines, they switched to an electronic wastegate. So here's your flapper that helps control how much boost is going to be entering into your engine. Now from 2013 onward, you can control what happens with the boost when you get off throttle and you can control how the wastegate actuates depending on throttle position. Now on an N54, you're coming off throttle and you have to wait for the boost solenoids to kind of help tell the wastegate to chill out and stop actuating. And by that time, you're not gonna be able to get rid of the boost in time. I believe they switched to an electronic wastegate, but maintained the, the diverter valve or blow off valve electronic because they were still figuring out the technology. But really what they could do is, so the moment you even like be begin to let off the throttle by just one or 2%, it could tell the DME, hey, we have a condition where there's high boost, high RPMs and a gear shift open this 100% up to complete off as much boost as possible. Anything that doesn't get taken care of by the wastegate gets taken care of by the bypass valve. But they got so good that they realized, hey, we can, we can just handle this alone. This will get the job done. Between the valve tronic and the logic they came up with, like we don't even need this. We got so good with actuating the wastegate to dump boost that we don't even need this anymore. That's where we are with the B58. So your next question may be, why do I have a cylinder head sitting here? It's from the N54, but I want to demonstrate what's happening with Valvetronic. Because the intake manifold is always wide open, your air has to stall at the port. And then you have to open the intake valves to do anything with it. And if you want to control engine RPMs, you want to close these, but maybe not all the way. So now I think on the B58, you have the air coming in and you have the lift control of the valve. So what you can do 
is just open this a couple millimeters uh, just to allow the boost that was waiting behind the valves to get into the combustion chamber and then they'll go out through the exhaust. So if you've heard the new Supra or like the M340i and whatnot, they've really went aggressive with that technology. So I would picture like a returnless fuel system. So on the B58 onward, they said, why don't we make the air returnless? So let's just use it appropriately. So instead of bypassing it back into the intake, we're gonna have it come through here and then we're just gonna scavenge it out through the combustion chamber, out the exhaust. How do you do that without affecting the engine RPMs? You cut the spark. And you need to do that anyway if you have a really fast transmission, otherwise you'll get overrun or you'll get like a bog or um, a lurch when you're shifting gears. So that's where the DSG fart sound comes from on a modern uh, BMW, even though it's not uh, DSG or dual clutch. So it still needs to do something with the air and fuel. So it actually just dumps and wastes it's kind of like waste spark for ignition timing. It disables the spark uh, in between gear shifts so that it can take whatever air and fuel was here and just send it out the exhaust with the understanding that the exhaust will be hot enough that the cat is right by the front of the engine so it can deal with it and give you that nice pop sound when you're changing gears. So because of that, you don't have your traditional issue where Back to the mass airflow analogy. A lot of people would say back in the day, don't add a blow off valve, don't change your bypass valve because the air was metered at the air filter. And if it's not dumped back into the intake, then there's gonna be less air that the DME expected and it's not gonna be able to burn it. And therefore it's gonna make it run rich where it'll bog or it can actually stall on like really old school cars if you had a mass airflow. It didn't matter if you had a map sensor so much because it was all about well, what ends up in the manifold in terms of pressure. So I think we're at an advantage because of the way they've tuned these cars to push the excess pressure out the exhaust, you're no longer in a situation where you're gonna have a rich situation when you're shifting gears with a mass airflow based turbocharger system because of the fact that it's just gonna push it out the exhaust anyway. Another point is on the N54, when you, when you bypass the atmosphere, it's not a big deal because you have the manifold absolute pressure system, which isn't very accurate in terms of light throttle, but it wasn't a big deal because the air that makes it into the charge pipe is all it cares about. Whether you dumped it back in or not, it's still measuring pressure in the pipe. So that brings us to today where they made a B58 blow off valve solution. If you want that sound, it's gonna bolt to your charge pipe and work just like we described where excess pressure gets pushed out the side here. You put your vacuum nipples here and you connect your intake manifold and you're back in 2007 when the N54 came out. And if you were to buy a blow off valve for your N55, it would actually look like this, where it's electronically controlled. It's gonna to talk to the ECU. Why would you downgrade uh, 10 plus years in terms of technology to get that sound? Specifically for that reason. Why did I buy that instead of a Model 3 Performance? Because I want the experience, the theater of it all. Why do you put an exhaust, etc.? It's not necessarily logical, but it does make a difference. So even on stock boost pressure, it will give a blow off sound, but it won't be as aggressive as the N54 because when you snap the throttle shut, things happen very aggressively. But when you snap the throttle shut on a B58 or N55, because of the Valvetronic, it's not gonna be as crisp of a, of a deactivation unless you're in sport mode. So you'd have to kind of deliberately try to get the blow off valve sound because of the technology. So unless you have a tune, you're probably not gonna hear the excess boost. And really, does it make sense to do it from a performance standpoint? Absolutely not, it's just for sound. Where would you want to put a blow off valve back into the equation? You'd wanna put it back into the equation when you upgrade your turbo, I would say. So if you have an N55, the DME will control this pretty easily, it's self-explanatory. But if you're relying strictly pretty much on the Valvetronic and the electronic wastegate to get rid of the excess boost pressure, and you've added another like eight PSI plus a way more flow, then that whole calibration has to be redone by a really experienced tuner. So you're at their mercy uh, with regards to skills on bleeding the boost out of the system if you've changed from the stock parameters and that can be an issue if you're running really high boosts or you're upgrading your turbo. So rather than deal with the potential headache of blowing your turbo up because your tuner um, just didn't get the data logging right or whatnot, they can do it. If they're good, they won't need anything but the Valvetronic and the wastegate. But if you wanna upgrade your turbo and get the sounds and make things a little more fun and old school, that's where this kit would come into play. This only came out a couple weeks ago, so I figured I'll be adding value to the B58 community by talking about this new kit and showing you how it sounds at stock boost pressure. But really, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it unless you guys are planning on doing more tuning it or something along those lines or upgrading your turbo. It's a good preparation mod and it gives you that theater, but really, I wanna show you guys what to expect with a stock car and the upgraded blow valve. 
So hopefully that you guys have gathered that it's not as bad as it used to be where you're getting unmetered air vented atmosphere because that air would have just been bypassed through the combustion chamber via a combination of the wastegate and the valvetronic system. So we're at this point in time where five years after the car came out, we're adding technology from 10 plus years ago just for the experience of it. It would be akin to buying a manual car in this day and age when it doesn't really make any sense from an efficiency standpoint. But from an efficiency standpoint in terms of fuel consumption or emissions, it's really based on the way these cars are designed, it wouldn't make a difference because that gets dumped to your exhaust anyway. It'll definitely be a less dramatic blow off valve effect because of the fact that you don't have a, a abrupt throttle closure and the way the system is designed to mitigate boost. So you'll have to be deliberate to get the sound. So it's not gonna really have much of a play under normal circumstances. You just have to be a fan of old school turbo noises to bother. I'm doing this in preparation. Maybe one day I'll uh, upgrade the turbo on the B58. And you may be wondering how will this use vacuum to be able to actuate this if there's no vacuum inside the intake manifold. And like we discussed, really it's about the pressure. So as long as there's a pressure differential between the top and bottom, whatever has more pressure will win. That would be the charge pipe and that would be pushing this up and venting out the excess pressure. It doesn't have to be in a heavy vacuum to be able to act up on this. It's getting pushed from the bottom. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that lesson. Let's get to installing this on the car now. Okay, so first steps, of course, is gonna be to take the engine cover off, go after the connectors on the charge pipe itself. There's a gray plastic tab that you gotta lift up and then rock back. There's a white plastic tab here. Same story with that. Let's get those out of the way. Just for the sake of being able to wiggle things out, I'm gonna remove this, depress the two tabs and get it out of the way. There's three T30s up here. I'm gonna focus on getting this air box out of the way for now. So this is an aftermarket intake, the E12. And lift up on this lower air box. Okay, so now we're gonna have to take out this uh, turbo inlet here. So we're gonna have to take off this PCV system here, squeeze top and bottom, and then just gently rock it back. Be prepared for it to be brittle, so take care of that. Kind of hard to make up, but right there is an electrical connector. So we're gonna lift up on the plastic portion. We'll get behind this so we can be able to pull it up, depress it, and pull that off. Then you're gonna wanna disconnect this just to get that out of the way. I'm gonna go after this as well, just to get it out of the way with the electronic wastegate. Going after the C-clip here that holds the inlet on. If you look right down in here, there's another plastic tube that has to be removed. You push it on it, expect it to be brittle, so take care. I just removed that completely, it was easy enough. We'll see if there's enough room to get this all out together without needing to undo the clamp down there. Getting to that clamp could have been a bit of a pain, so I figured let's try to get it all as one. It wasn't so bad. So now you can see the other end of that charge pipe it has a similar style C-clip on it, but this one clips up and into place easily. So on the back of the charge pipe, there's a plastic support for your rad hose. You want to unclip that so that you can move the charge pipe back enough. So if you guys were wondering, the trick is to get a pick underneath this. And if you try to get just one side clipped up, like so, the other side will stay locked in. You gotta get the other side up, and then if you're lucky, you'll get it to where this pops out of this little channel here. Once it sits above the pipe here, like so, you'll be able to pull the charge pipe off. We'll need this clip out of here, so I'm just gonna extract it. Next up, we'll need the sensors out of here. Next up, using a T20, we're gonna take this screw out. That was a T20, and then this, you just unscrew. So now when we put the new pipe in, you want to mimic this exact orientation. The best thing to do would be to put the new pipe in front of it and copy the exact orientation. I'm inserting the clipper removed from the other charge pipe. The kit includes two O-rings, which we got to put in here. We'll screw in the sensors. This hardware is included. These would be for methanol injection or a hob switch, depending on your setup, but the kit comes with bungs to close those off. That doesn't appear to be metric, so I'm just using a T30. Fits in there well. And this is NPT tapered, so you don't have to tighten it all the way to get it to seal. There's pipe tape on there. We can set the blow-off valve up on here. This clamp is a four mil Allen. I oriented the outputs toward the front, and I'm gonna block this off, and I'm gonna put the fitting on the other side. The kit comes with these fittings for nylon line. With regards to where we're gonna get our manifold source from, it's right here. You remove this, comes with this fitting. 
O-rings are pre-installed, but we gotta tap these off with the bungs and the quick connects. And I'll bring this over here. There's a big C-clip that we're gonna put in. Okay, so that just clips into the front of that when you're done. And you have a place to put your vacuum line into. So we're ready to feed the charge pipe down into place. I had to give the clip for the charge pipe a couple love taps to be able to drop into place. Using the included the vacuum line, it just pops into the blow off valve. We'll start threading these in. Okay, I'm bringing this back into place. In case it wasn't obvious, this is also a place to deal with a common failure point that could potentially happen due to it being plastic upgrading to metal. So I had to cut this line a little short to have a natural bend. It may be better to use the other side in terms of where you put this vacuum line because there's a little bit more room there versus over here. But still, I got my clearance from the rad shroud so we're okay. And it's not the prettiest to put the clamps in this orientation facing up like that, but it's gonna be good for if you ever have an issue where it pops off while you're driving or something along those lines if you're pushing the car. It's nice to have them oriented up so you can deal with it quickly on the road. So, you know, it's a bit of a cosmetic upgrade being gloss black, but nothing crazy. It still kind of blends in. So we'll just basically go for a test drive and see how it sounds. Okay, so this will probably be the best case scenario. You're in sport mode, transmission in sport, and partial throttling. It's a pretty crisp blow off, but there's not a lot of boost there on a stock tune to really give you a, a sharp blow off and you got to be a little bit deliberate with your uh, throttle inputs to really get it to go off but I'll just accelerate partial throttle here come to a stop and then you guys will get an idea you don't really get the bleed off as you're partial throttling but you can actually surprisingly still get it even when you're in regular mode but I'll just accelerate from here not too hard Put it into comfort mode and then show you that you can still get it to go off but it's probably going to come to life when it has a custom tune or an upgraded turbo okay regular comfort mode i'm going to partial throttle it so that's kind of nice you don't have to be in sport mode to get it to go off and actually it seems to do the partial throttle bleeding you can hear it kind of semi venting when you're under throttle kind of like the n54 does So it's there. If you're just driving normally and not really thinking about it, there'll be situations where you're gonna get it to go off and it sounds pretty crisp and good. But I think, uh, you know, 500 plus wheel horsepower, upgraded turbo, that's where it's gonna really sound great. You guys gonna kinda like that you can hear it uh, going off under normal driving. It's nothing crazy. But like I said, it's not gonna be super crisp given the Valvetronic and the amount of boost you're running stock. But it, it does kick in and you don't have to really think too much about it. You can be in regular mode, comfort mode, and just get it to go off every once in a while, which is a bit of an accomplishment. All right, let's wrap this video up. All right guys, that'll conclude this video showing you how to add a blow off valve and upgrade your charge pipe on your B58 powered BMW. If this is the first video you're catching on mine, please consider subscribing. If you liked it, please give it a like so I'll rank higher. Thanks for watching.